best friend. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm ready for another amazing show. Well, we have a wonderful guest. Super excited to have him on. Who is our guest today? Uh, we have Rini and Angolia. Yeah, we do. And he is up for a big time nomination. He's been nominated for just awesome stuff. So we're going to be talking about that. Tell us some, some facts about uh, Mr. Angolia. Well, he had 4,624 rushing yards at UMass. Oh, yeah. Um, he has 10 UMass school records. Uh, he be- became the first UMass player to average more than 100 yards per game. Uh, he outrushed the opposing team 18 times in his career. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. And uh, he was inducted into the UMass Hall of Fame in 2007. Nice. Um, he also played on the Redskins and Bills practice squad. So he played pro ball. Okay, keep going. Didn't he also play, play somewhere else pro? Uh, yeah, he played um, in the uh, Europe version of NFL. Right? Yeah, NFL Europe. NFL Europe. Um, he is a sports broadcaster for ESPN. Yes, uh, yes. And he's a detective in Orlando. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, why don't you welcome him and we'll get going. Uh, welcome to the show. Zane, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be on this show with you. I've watched many interviews that you've done. You do such a great job. So I'm actually a little nervous, Zane, to be on here with you, but I'm going to do my best. All right. Thanks. You don't have too many tough questions, do you, buddy? No. All right. I forgot to tell uh, Mr. Golia that I might have a couple questions that we didn't send him in advance. So, uh oh, bonus questions. Okay, I'm up. Yeah, for it gets it. a couple of questions too. They might, they might be old school, high school questions. We'll see. Do you have facts? I do have a fact that I remember when he was a junior in high school that helped lead Bishop Kearney high school to a sectional title. And I was at the game. How about that? Got to support. We went to the same high school. So I was there for one year as, uh, as Rini knows. And it was, it was a great year for sports. The soccer team got to semifinals and sectionals. We lost the number one team in the country still to be debated whether they had an illegal player or not that signed a professional <laughs> professional contract in Europe before he came over to play high school. We won't talk about piss for Um, And that should be probably investigated 30 years later, <laughs> but yeah, the football team was phenomenal that year. And Rini was one of the, the stars on that team and continued, uh, you know, the following year, I'll have him talk about that a little bit later on and what happened to senior year. But um, we were just, uh, we actually, we just had a graduation party and saw one of your former teammates, a couple, uh, Matt Tyler and uh, Mark Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. Graduation party for Mark Tyler's niece yesterday. So Zany, take it away with your first question. Well, uh, for my first question, uh, how did you prepare yourself for college and pro football? Yeah, you know, Zane, great question. Um, you back when we grew up, me and your dad, because we're at the same age, um, We didn't really, we didn't have cell phones. Forget smartphones. We didn't have cell phones, period. Um, Cable was just coming around channel-wise. And so we just played sports, right? So get outside, play sports. And the big thing is play multiple sports. I mean, whatever season it was, that's what I did. That's what my buddies did. If it was football season, play football, soccer, play soccer, basketball, baseball. Played them all because although you end up concentrating in one sport ultimately playing the other sports helps you out tremendously for that sport so for me it was just playing and I just I love sports in general um and so that was the biggest thing and and just working hard and so it came a point when I was in high school that I wanted to play college football I wanted to earn a scholarship and I just remember growing up thinking to myself how many other kids were out there across the country that wanted that same goal, that same dream, and how hard they were working. So I said, man, I have to be the hardest working person. And I tell my daughters, I have one that plays college soccer down here in Florida, and one that's a senior in high school. Um, It's not what you do when people are watching you. It's what you do when no one's watching you. 
Meaning, you know, you got to get out there on your own. You got to work out. You got to run. You got to lift weights. If that's what your sport, um, you know, leads you to do. And so that's really what I did. I just worked hard and just, you know, I set goals and tried to achieve those goals along the way. Yeah, that's a great answer. Um, for my second question, uh, what's a time in your life when you wanted to give up, but you didn't? Your dad kind of alluded to this in the beginning. So my junior year in high school, we won the uh, Section 5 championship in, in Rochester for Bishop Carney High School and just on top of the world. And I, I was getting recruited really heavily by a lot of Division One colleges. Um, and back then, you really you didn't commit early. Um, there was no extravagant TV shows for high school kids, which there is today. I mean, if your name was in the paper, if your picture was in the paper, if you happened to make a magazine – that was like a big deal. Yep. World has changed a lot since then, but you know, I was, I was, I had a lot of good schools that were going to give me scholarships and early in my career in my senior season in high school at Bishop Kearney, I blew my knee out. I tore my ACL, which back in the late eighties, that's a, that's a major um, injury. And I lost all those scholarship offers and I was really, really down. And I thought to myself, okay, I mean, what do you do now? And you can't give up. So you set goals, you get after it, you rehab. And I was so fortunate, so blessed that the University of Massachusetts, which was a smaller division one school, still gave me a full scholarship. Um, and it was the only offer I had. And so obviously I went there and the rest is history. I made the most of it. And, and I'm, a, I'm a firm believer, Zane, that everything in life happens for a reason. And, you know, I was placed there for a purpose. And I went there and I, I, I you know, I had a great career. And ironically, Syracuse University, um, Dick McPherson, who was a Hall of Fame coach there, um, who's obviously since passed away, but great, great coach. He recruited me really heavily at Syracuse. Well, he's a former UMass coach as well. And it was kind of a connection for Dick McPherson to the then coach at UMass, Jim Reed, that kind of connected me with UMass. So again, everything happens for a reason. I went there, I busted my butt, and I ended up having a really good career there. So um, I'm happy, you know, that it happened the way it did because, you know, you when, when things like that happen, Zane, when you get a, a catastrophic injury, you can do one of two things, right? You can give up or you can say, okay, this is the hand I was dealt. Let me work really hard. And that's what I did. And I made the most of it. And to me, um, the way it turned out was the way it was supposed to. Yeah. Uh, in life, you have to face adversity no matter what. You know, uh, it's, in a, it's, in a, it's in a, it's in a, I can't talk today. It's in a, in Absolutely. A, You're right. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Zane's doing some rehab on his, he's growing so fast. These Achilles are really tight and giving him some problems. So he's been going to physical therapy. So it's, it's tough. It's tough being a kid and you want to be playing your soccer at hundred percent and he's getting back into it. But you, um, Rini mentioned some of the, cause Zane knows football. Some yeah. of the schools I remember hearing some of the schools that, that were interested in having you play for them, your Notre Dame's, et cetera. So, yeah. so Notre Dame was the first, college that ever sent me a letter I was in ninth grade when they sent me a letter Lou Holtz was there um and then I got letters from Stanford I got letters from a lot of schools but the ones that were probably really most interested in me once we hit my junior in high school was Syracuse University yep. Boston College and of course being a Catholic kid going to a Catholic high school Bishop sure. I really liked Boston College Notre Dame kind of pushed away from me a little bit, which what happens in the recruiting pro process, uh, Penn state, I had visited Penn state, which was just, you know, phenomenal. And then kind of an outlier, which you wouldn't think of uh, a school coming to Rochester, New York to recruit someone like me was the university of Wisconsin. They were actually really heavy on me and they actually offered me unofficially a scholarship uh, my junior year. And I'll never forget. I tell people this story because it has to do with, uh, persevering and, and overcoming and understanding that, Hey, not everything happens, you know, the way you en envision it. And you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta adjust. I, I never forget the coach and his name was Bernie Wyatt, longtime assistant coach. And I remember him telling me, 
after my junior year, um, you, we're going to give you a scholarship. Just don't get hurt. Oh God. And of Curse. course, of course I blew my knee out. And I, I remember so vividly the conversation when he called me back, um, and Syracuse the same way. And Ivan Fears recruited me, who went on to have a phenomenal coaching career, was at New England Patriots forever. And I remember Ivan Fears coming to, to Bishop Carney, kind of feeling my leg, how it had atrophied. He said, if it was just, you know, a scope, we'd still give you a scholarship, but a full ACL, we can't do it. And in the University of Wisconsin, I remember him telling me, Bernie Wyatt telling me that it's he goes, it's like you're, and I'm an 18-year-old kid, right? And he goes, it's like you go to a car dealership to buy a car. You go to the dealership and there's all these beautiful cars and you pick out the car you want. You tell the dealership, that that's the car right there. Well, you go back to pick that car up, you know, a few months later and there's a dent in the car. Well, you're not going to buy that car. You're going to buy the car right next to it that's just as is, is good as possible to that car that you were going to buy. And that was me. I kind of had a dent. And yeah, it's kind of harsh, right? As an 18-year-old kid, but it's, it's, it's reality. It's, it's the hand that I got dealt in life. And as I talked about earlier, you can, you can cry about it or you can say, okay, I'm just going to fight through this and make the most of it and get better and get stronger. And when things happen like that at a young age and when things happen in college, you know, you learn life lessons that you don't even realize you're learning. You know, now that I'm 50 and I look back, you're like, wow, it, it taught you a lot. And it's, it's made me the person, it's made me the husband, it's made me the father that I am today, all these things that happened. But, but yeah, so that was, it was a tough time, but you know, I couldn't be more thankful for UMass stepping in, giving me a scholarship. And then of course, you know, I had the opportunity to play there for four years. Um, not a lot of people can say they played for four years at, at their college, which is, which is, it, it was great. True. Zany, what's your next question? Um, I think you're a hero because uh, you're a police officer. Uh, can you think, uh, th can you talk about your job? Yeah. So, and I, so I just retired. Um, so I did over 20 years with the Orlando police department. And the reason I retired was I had the job with ESPN. So I was kind of able to, when I got to, to the, uh, to the threshold of 20 years. Um, but thank you for th saying that Zane, because kind of, Police around the country have kind of been under attack. I think sometimes you watch them on the news and, and, you know, people are kind of down on them. And I tell people all the time. Not in this family. Officers, Not in this family. Good. Well, I tell people all the time, police officers, men and women in police, uh, in the police world, they're no different than anyone else, right? They're, they're human beings. They have good days. They have bad days. And the other thing is, and it sounds cliche, but it's so true. 99.9% .9 of the men and women in law enforcement are great, great people that do their best. Now, do police officers make mistakes? Of course they do. We all make mistakes in every job we do. There's a difference between a police officer making a mistake and one that crosses a line and breaks the law. That's totally different. But they're far and few between. The majority of the men and women in law enforcement do a great job. And, and uh, so thank you for supporting us. And it's, it's, I am so proud of my 20 years that I spent uh, as a police officer. And the majority of it, I was a police detective. I did um, violent crimes. I was a robbery detective in criminal investigations. And uh, I love that job. And I, I'm kind of sad the way police are, 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 are kind of getting vilified because what happens is that prevents people, good people that want to become police officers, it keeps them away from the job. And that's like the exact opposite of the direction we need to go. We need good people to become police officers. So hopefully the tide will turn. I think it is. I think it is, but thank you so much for supporting because it is such a important and it's a great career. And if I had it to do all over again, I would do it, do it the exact same way. Zane, what do you do whenever you see a police officer or someone from the military or fireman? What do you do? Well, uh, I say thank you for your service. So thank you for your service. Well, thank you very much too. And I, I do that. So I'm retired, and whenever I see uh, police officers anywhere, I always go up, shake their hand, and thank them for their service. I don't tell them that I did 20 years. Um, I just I think it's important um, to show that support because, as we talked about so many times, and you see it, you know, on the news, unfortunately, that you know police officers are kind of put in a bad light. You never ever see all the good stuff the men and women in law enforcement do. So. 
with people like you, Zane, I know that'll turn around. Thanks. Um, for my bonus question, uh, describe how you felt when you heard you were nominated for the College Football Hall of Fame. Yeah, um, boy, it, it was just, it's an awesome feeling. And I know it sounds cliche, but I tell people just being on the ballot um, is really an honor. Um, it really is. Um, I, I'm so excited. Now, if I could get inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, that would be like beyond my wildest dreams. Um, that would obviously be the biggest honor bestowed on me uh, in, my, in my playing career, in my sports career, no doubt about it. But just being on the ballot is great. Um, I'm excited. And just see all the different names that are on there and all the different great names that are in the Hall of Fame. So, um, but yeah, and I'm, I'm excited. So, you know, every year I've been on the ballot a few years now, haven't gotten in. So, you know, we'll see. And again, everything, if it's, if it's meant to be, it's going to happen. I really believe that. So we'll, we'll see this year if I, if I get the nod or not, but just again, being on the ballot is, uh, is very exciting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would just be throwing a party if I was on the ballot. <laughs> well, you know, and you mentioned it, you mentioned it in the beginning, I was inducted into the UMass Hall of Fame in 2007. And really, you didn't ask this, but that's kind of what got me into broadcasting with ESPN. Because in 2007, when I went up there for the Hall of Fame induction, they always do the ceremony on a Friday night, and it's in the fall. And then there's a football game on Saturday. So I was the halftime guest for the radio show. And it was the first time I ever put um, headphones on. And I did a whole interview, like a five-minute segment. And I said, man, this is really cool. I would love to try to do this. And from that interview, it kind of spurred me to try to get into broadcasting. And then really, you know, two years later, I started with the UMass Sports Network and went back there and did a year uh, for, the, for the radio network. And then in 2010, blessed uh, that ESPN hired me and I started it online, ESPN3, and kind of moved my way up. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's been great. You got anything else you want to ask, bud, before I ask my question? Um, no, I think that's it. Yeah, that was that was a good line of questioning. Yeah, it was great stuff, Zane. You oh, always do a great job, buddy. I'm proud of you. Keep it up. So, Rini, yeah. tell, when you were going through the, the knee issue, what was your biggest motivator and who, who do you think helped you or pushed you the most? Yeah, really family, uh, Chris, no doubt family. And so I mentioned about playing multiple sports, right? So I played football, basketball, and baseball. So right. when I blew my knee out um, and it was like second game of uh, my senior season, I was done. I mean, I was put on the shelf the entire year. I mean, ACLs back then, I, I still marvel at how quick men and women in today's world come back from ACL injuries. Back, it's incredible. Then, back then it was a year, year and a half injury. There's no doubt about it. So you know, senior year, I missed all football season, basketball season, baseball season. So I just rehabbed. And, you know, it was just, you know, the support of family, you know, staying behind me. And then um, great surgeon, Kenneth DeHaven at the University of Rochester, Strong Memorial Hospital, did a great job putting me back together. And then um, University Sports Medicine there in Rochester, I, I just rehabbed. And I rehabbed in a way not just to get better, from my knee injury, but to get better to play football again. Yep. So it was kind of, it was more than just your normal rehab. And, uh, and so, yeah, just the support of family and friends and just, you know, I'm, I, I'm a kind of the, the, the person that kind of, you know, go ahead and put a chip on my shoulder. So once I lost all those scholarships, I was like, okay, I'm going to show them that I'm going to make it back um, and play again. And not only play, um, do a good job. So, you know, when I got to UMass, my goal was to win a starting job. I did that. You know, I wanted to be all conference. I wanted to be an all American. I wanted to win and pretty much achieved all those goals at UMass. And, uh, you know, and the other thing too, was, um, I wanted to be the first person in my family, uh, to get a, a four-year degree. And I was, um, I ended up, you know, you know, graduating, um, from university of Massachusetts. So it was, it was the total, picture um i really couldn't have asked for it to you know to happen any better yeah and all that hard work that you put in and you, you talk about having a chip on your shoulder that only gives you more motivation to say you know what this is what you guys lost out on and it, it's a business and you get it 
you know, especially now yeah. announcing and understanding it all these years later at 18, it is pretty harsh as you were saying. Uh, so now you would have gone to, you think you would have gone to Wisconsin? I don't think so. I think it probably would have been Syracuse or Boston yeah. college. Yeah, yeah. I think it would have been one of those two. Um, Syracuse, you got, and you know, you remember in the, in the late eighties, early nineties, a lot Dominant. of people don't remember this were, they were a national you yeah. know, power. They were a top 20 team every year. Um, yeah, and they, you know, it's the old, and I, it's funny. I talked to coaches about this when we travel because recruiting is so different now with the way things are on TV and the internet, but in the old days and coaches are getting back to it and you have to, you have to put that proverbial fence around your area when you recruit. And back then, Syracuse took pride. If there was someone in New York sure. State yep. that was a top player, they took pride in not losing that player to True. another school, especially another school in their conference. And I, I remember them saying, hey, we're hearing, we're hearing crickets. We're, we're hearing noise that you want to go to Boston College. Sure. Don't do it. You're yep. coming to Syracuse. Yeah, so it makes a lot of Syracuse. sense. It would have been Syracuse or Boston College. It probably would have been Syracuse when it was all said and done because Dick McPherson, the head coach, him and Ivan Fears were the two that they recruited me the hardest. Um, right. So, but, you know, it wasn't in the cards. Well, the last question I have, and I know Zane's interested, interested in this. Can you talk about, because I, when you were playing with the Bills, and then eventually you went to the skin slash commanders. I don't even know yeah. how, how you feel about the commanders team. But, I always say Redskins because it's imprinted in my head. So if I offend anyone, I apologize. It's hard for me to remember commanders. But, but I, I remember it. watching you play in a preseason game and absolutely tear it up. I'm like, he is going to make this team. And then you, you're, you know, you ended up being on the practice squad. Yeah. I was waiting. I was waiting. I mean, were you waiting for that one break where someone's sure. like, just give me in a game because I, I watched several games and you were really good. So a lot, and you, you, you're on the money with this. A lot of it's timing, right? It, being in the right place at the right time. So I had a really good first camp with Buffalo. And I remember when Marv Levy, um, when they did the cuts, um, he brought me in. He said, hey, we got to let you go. But he said, um, it's just a numbers thing. He goes, but there's a good chance next week we're going to re-sign you to the practice squad. It's officially called the developmental squad. Um, he said, I can't do it right now, but we have to wait a, a week. So I felt good about that. And then that's when I went home and that night Washington called me and I went down there and then they ended up signing me. So I said, well, what the heck? Let me, let me go to Washington's practice squad and show them what I can do because Buffalo had already seen me. So I was with Washington for almost the whole 97 season. And then Buffalo had gotten an injury and then they signed me back. So for probably seven or eight weeks of the 97 season, I was on the active roster for the bills. I just never suited up. And then back gotcha. in, in 98, again, I was on, I, I did the practice squad again in 98 and just never got a chance to jump up to the active roster. And then 99, um, I went and played in NFL Europe. And then in, in 99, when I went to NFL Europe, I kind of knew um, I was, I was going to move on to law enforcement. It's really hard in, in, in any pro sport, but especially NFL, and I, I try to tell people every year, right? We talked about how good college is. There's a new crop of players coming out. So it, it's, it's, it's hard for a player like me to, to latch on. And, you know, hindsight's 2020. I almost, I almost got complacent um, and, and satisfied with, okay, I made the practice squad, um, you know, and I was on an active route. I was on the 53 man. And I was kind of like, okay, you made it, right? Where now that yeah. I look back as a 50 year old, I'm like, man, I wish I would have just, and not that I wasn't trying hard because I was, but I just wish I would have gotten that chip on my shoulder again and just really went that extra step and just said, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to play. I, I'm going to not only make the roster, I'm going to play. And it just, it wasn't in the cards. Um, of course, when I went to NFL Europe, I played and we won a World Bowl and Jake Delhomme, uh was our, was my quarterback. So that was, that was a great experience as well. But, uh, uh, Overall, I would not trade uh, my path one bit. If, 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 you know, the good Lord came down and said, hey, you could do it all over again and not hurt your knee, I'd say, nope, I want to do it the exact same way. Yep. Now, knowing some things that I know, even though doing it that same way, I probably would push a little harder in some, in some aspects. But really, for the most part, I wouldn't change anything. It, it's built me, uh, again, the person I am, the husband I am, the father I am, uh, the police officer I was, 
and the broadcaster I am. There's no doubt about it. So absolutely zero regrets with anything I've done. That's awesome. Zane, I, I tell you this all the time. When you overcome things, you take on risks, you know, and you'll that growth mindset when, when difficult stuff happens and you push through it, it, it really does change you. And that's one of the things that, you know, as a dad teaching, you know, both him and his sister uh, is important. That's one of the things that we, you know, when we do our shows, he's learning so much and she's learning so much from her shows on how people become successful. And they're, they're seeing there's common things being able to, to push themselves, not give up being around good people. So all those things, and I love this kid, this kid just, he does, he really does push himself. He's, you know, he got voted best classmate by his classmates going on to sixth grade next year. And, uh, you know, when you hear stuff like that, it just makes me so proud of him. And for sure, you know what, Rini, I tell you what, you know, that we're big fans of your new basketball coach there and Zane had him on his show and he was not happy, but now he's happy that he's closer. So we're That's gonna right. Frank Martin. You got you guys got to go to Amherst now. You got to see. We, we are already planning on it, and then a basketball game. We're already planning on it. So you, I don't know if you're going to be in the area, but uh, maybe we'll coordinate and uh, somehow work that out with you. Yeah, hit me up. The winter time sometimes I can't get free, and I haven't been up there in a while, so I, that would be awesome. But I wanted to tell Zane, people um, email me and send me direct messages all the time and ask me for advice in broadcasting because because. I wouldn't get to where I am today without the help of so many people. Um, so whenever someone asks me for advice, I always answer them. I may not be able to you know, solve an issue they have, but I will always give advice and I will always never turn someone away. And the thing I tell people all the time is get reps, reps, and more reps. So the thing I love about Zane, what you're doing, Zane, is you don't even realize it. But you're learning a huge life skill in the broadcasting world right now, just doing these interviews, because by doing the interviews, you're getting invaluable experience. You're getting better. You're getting stronger. You're getting, I I, I guarantee you, your vocabulary is getting better. You're feeling more at ease doing it. So you're learning the most valuable skill in the broadcast world. That is repetition and practice and do it over and over. So good for you, buddy. Keep it up, Zane, because there is no doubt you are going to be a superstar one day. Thanks. Um, we also have one more segment, uh, mem- memorabilia minute. Go ahead. Uh, I have a Redskins helmet. Look at that. That's a, that's a collector's item now. The old logo. Fifty dollars on eBay. Fifty dollars on eBay. Fifty dollars on eBay. If you get fifty dollars on eBay, God bless you. Yeah. Go for it. All right, let's do your closing. Why don't you thank uh, Mr. Angoli and we'll do our your closing and then we'll sign off. We're all scored away. Uh, thanks for coming on my show. Again, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Keep up all the great work. All right, I will. And how do you want to sign off, Zany? Like we always do. Yep. Uh, as Jimmy Valvano said, don't give up. Don't ever give up. Bye. Love you, buddy. Rini, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Great catching up. See you. Bye-bye. Great stuff, guys. Thank you. Thank you.